Welcome everyone to Coffee with Developers. Today with Benjamin Bayard. He is a senior solutions architect at NVIDIA. It's very nice having you here. Benjamin, how are you doing? Hello, Mark. Uh, well, I'm going fine. Well, you don't see that, but the sun is uh, shining today in Paris. So, and uh, as you, if you may notice, uh, people will notice my accent. Uh, well, I'm from Paris and uh, today it's a sunny day. So it's great. Oh, nice. We are not that far away, but here the weather is not really quite that sunny. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit, um, you are working at a quite high position at NVIDIA, but I, I'm a little bit interested and hopefully also the audience, where you come from, like what is a little bit your journey through tech? Can you take us a little bit through that? Okay, okay. Um, so I will try to make it short or, or long. Uh, well, I'm not <laughs> that, that young anymore. So let's say I would say <laughs> in the 90s, uh, I, I don't know exactly where it's coming from, but I do remember some uh, in the 90s going to a friend of my brother and his big brother was having that 3DS Mac software. And I think that mm -hmm. was one of the first time I was into, well, computer. Well, for people who do remember, not everyone was having a computer. Well, today, even uh, your children uh, do have a smartphone, <laughs> uh, which is uh, a big change. Uh, but let's say in the 90s, having uh, first a computer and something to create some 3D um, well, it was a TIE fighter, if I remember correctly, and it was so great. So when I think when I was 17, my uh, father bought for the family the, the first computer for, for, for the house, for the house. And this is where I started to be, uh, well, let's say, uh, getting in touch and uh, starting to, uh, to work around computers, uh, remembering buying a, a 3D modeling software. I think it doesn't exist mm -hmm. anymore. A lot of software disappeared <laughs> over the years. And... Uh, it's funny because the, the, the computer, they were not that powerful, but your imagination was there to create a virtual environment. And let's say, I would say that's maybe one of the origin about creation virtually something, because I'm a, on, the, on the other side, I'm a creative guy with my hands. I like to create, you know, I started mm -hmm. to do uh, mock-ups when I was 13. So creating something virtual or real, but a, a new world was something that was really appealing to me. And uh, during my study, I went to an engineering school in France with, uh, let's say, the, 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 the majors who are, were on uh, uh, mathematics, because people, uh, well, need to understand that a lot of what yeah. is behind uh, computers is mathematics, uh, computer science, and finance. So finance, don't take it wrong, that was not my, that, <laughs> my part. That was, even though uh, some years after, I met some um, of my uh, friends who were working at uh, banks, and you've got a lot of so interesting uh, mathematical computer stuff uh, at the bank as well. But myself, I was more into 3D world than uh, the industry, creating something, you know, uh, 3D modeling, uh, CAD application. And I do remember uh, second year uh, selecting the course on uh, uh, 3D and uh, VR. And I was having that teacher that gave us a, a paper from the C-Graph. And uh, the, the target was to, uh, to create a simulation of water. So it was early uh, 2000, and that was so amazing, you know, just writing some lines of codes. But then mm -hmm. at the end, being able to see, well, it was a, let's say, basic OpenGL, but starting to become uh, better and better. But to see a water, you know, uh, the animation of the water. And that's, let's say, that was the, the, the continuity of creating something. Uh, um, and uh, the, the two other topic was I moved to do a PhD around uh, 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 around haptics or so force mm -hmm. feedback devices and augmented reality. Augmented reality was really something I wanted to uh, to work into. And I moved afterwards to a, a SME, a French uh, small uh, medium sized uh, company uh, focusing mm -hmm. on VR. So do you see that's an evolution from uh, creating 3D models, virtual worlds, and uh, I would say I've been joining NVIDIA about a year ago, and I was really thrilled because this is, if I may, one of the only company I would have liked to move into. <laughs> you know, uh, well, what we are creating today, it's amazing. Wow, so uh, a dream come true, so to say. Uh, so yeah, you work, uh, you say you work at NVIDIA, and uh, can you tell us a little bit what uh, what your job is there? What do you actually do at NVIDIA as a senior solutions architect? Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, so let's say I'm part of, uh, also to understand uh, 
what's my job to, to understand I'm a part of the Inception program. So just a few words about Inception. That's a program, uh, a free program delivered by NVIDIA trying to work, well, trying, working with startup, trying to bring uh, the cutting edge technologies to those startup. It could be hardware, software, so as to create a new car, create a new, uh, let's say, a technology for helping doctors, you know, startup. The, the, the range of what startup can do with computers is uh, is large. And part of my job, well, that program is uh, is offering also some, uh, let's say, support like D DLI courses, DLI is Deep Learning Institute, uh, where we've got, uh, we can give access to free courses to start something. But in some cases, when the, uh, when the need is there, I could come into play. And uh, when I joined the team, so I'm a, a part of a worldwide team trying to help a startup all over the world with different skill among the team. Um, when I joined the team, one of the sentence was, I'm like Batman be behind the bat phone. <laughs> Let's say uh, I'm here trying my best as Batman to solve and to come into play when I'm, I'm cold. Um, that's part of my job. I would say... Uh, to be honest, it's sometimes challenging because Batman may, may have to fight some um, difficult situation. A difficult situation is, uh, no, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but startups and people, they do have ideas sometimes. Uh, NVIDIA will look to the future and trying to invent what will come onto the market. But startup also, I've got that capability. And this is where the great match is, is that they've got ideas and we try to work together to bring something uh, into life. Sometimes the ideas are maybe uh, difficult to reach uh, at first. Well, that's that's, part of I, my... yeah, that sounds uh, very interesting. C can you uh, do you have a project that that you can talk about that you found particularly interesting? Uh, you worked on. So I I wouldn't talk about a specific startup let's say uh, i i don't know about uh, privacy and everything else so mm -hmm. but let's say uh, there's some trends on the markets uh, myself um, i didn't mention that but i'm focusing a bit on omniverse maybe we can talk about it uh, a bit later but yeah, because sure. of my background of uh, 3d and uh, virtual reality i've got let's say uh, a knowledge about industry uh, virtual worlds uh, creation like this and one of the topics also that is um, a current trend on the market was creating a virtual avatar. A virtual avatar to be a, like a chatbot. Uh, by the way, I could be, you wouldn't, uh, maybe in some years you wouldn't know I'm, a, I'm fake and, uh, uh, and I'm just an avatar. But working from how to create that, how to animate, how to, to, um, to use which tools to, to, to lip sync the, the virtual avatar uh, lips, um, and then on the other side, I create uh, um, a model to answer a question in another language that, than just English. So you are bringing different technology all together so that at the end you can create, let's say, the, um, that, that avatar that would be placed in a museum, for example. You want to talk to, uh, yeah. uh, to Jules Verne. So you would create a, an avatar of Jules Verne and you can imagine my, my, my children going to the, to the museum. This is both entertaining and if the, the model behind is smart and uh, which is uh, today, well, uh, you don't deliver something that is not smart, you would have start to have that interaction and immersion, you know, that that's bringing a, uh, that kind of, um, and a really great to see all the, the, the different, let's say, tools put together to create a project and a, a new product, which is not only your uh, electrical uh, company answering you, uh, how to get access on the web page uh, to pay your bill? <laughs> yes, it, it actually sounds uh, sounds super fascinating uh, that project or general in in three uh, D. And uh, yeah, you you just mentioned uh, Omniverse, and uh, can you go a little bit more in detail? Tell us uh, what it is about and and how people can use it. Uh, that's uh, so I was. I was trying to summarize a bit previously, uh, several times trying to summarize that in few sentences, but it's a bit difficult because Omniverse, it's, uh, on my, my view, it's an incredible platform. So to try to summarize, uh, Omniverse is a first a development platform. The target is uh, for now to, uh, to, to bring onto the market uh, an, an environment where people could um, uh, take benefits of the key components 
that are uh, the layers, the, 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 the pillars of Omniverse. So uh, just to say, uh, you've got the, the RTX uh, renderer, well, uh, the, the, the high quality uh, rendering part, the USD part, which is one of the key components. So USD, maybe people start to know about it more and more because it starts to become a, a standard for, uh, let's say, uh, defining your 3D scene. And that's mm -hmm. a standard that offers the capability to bring assets from various and numerous uh, uh, software application. So that development platform, on top of bringing the asset, you have the capability to either create a new extension, so something that you would like to be part of Omniverse and that some other could use. So you are part of uh, the, the, that platform and that community. Or on the other side, you would like to uh, develop your own application based on Omniverse. So you see, Omniverse is not uh, um, a new game engine. We are not there. It's not a new game engine. It's not a CAD application. This is something that tried to bring all together, let's say, uh, aggregate, aggregate, well, bring together different assets from different sources, create that virtual world, and bring that uh, the output to something. It could be for uh, training a robot, uh, creating. So uh, one of the big topic that we do have is uh, SDG, so synthetic data generation. Mm -hmm. You generate some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, virtually some new pictures to train model for being, uh, after that, that model being brought into a car, you know, autonomous car. You mm -hmm. need to train that car. So you need the virtual environment yeah. to do that. Um, on the other side, you could have some other project that are, um, uh, more into uh, helping uh, the creation of a game. You want to have an avatar, mm -hmm. and you want that avatar to uh, uh, to look uh, great and uh, to move accordingly to your voice. So we do have tools extension that allows you uh, all along your creation of uh, your game, uh, take Omniverse as part of the tool. So you see, um, maybe people won't get yet everything, but because the, the, the panel is large. Creating an application, using it, uh, uh, relying on uh, some uh, key components uh, provided by NVIDIA. Wow, nice. And uh, did I understand correctly that Omniverse is not like a, uh, a metaverse, an own hosted world? It's just a tool to create your own? The, yes and no. <laughs> so it's <laughs> not just a tool. <laughs> it's one of the tools that... Uh, we believe uh, will be part of the creation of the metaverse. The metaverse uh, now is uh, the, here as well. The definition can be tricky because we don't know what will happen in the next two, five years. Mm -hmm. the, 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 today, the idea of the metaverse, one of the ideas uh, to create that uh, 3D virtual world persistence where you could go from one place to one another, meet the avatars of um, someone else that is uh, based in uh, so far away from you, but you meet virtually a bit like in that movie that everyone knows. Uh, well, if yeah. you don't know, search, but uh, people will know what I'm I, talking about. I think about. we can mention it here. It's a Ready Player One. It's a great movie for everyone to see if you love uh, 3D and virtual reality. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then to create those metaverse, uh, you need also some uh, lying, let's say, components and tools to create it. It's not it just uh, do, I will create a metaverse. Now, well, so Omniverse is part of the ecosystem. That would be my, um, my view, my presentation. Mm -hmm. Omniverse is part about the creation of the metaverse, which for now is still... Uh, we start to see some uh, virtual environments, but what we do miss, for example, is how to communicate. If I'm a uh, company A and building my own environment, company B, my own environment, <laughs> the idea, if we see that as the new, let's say, internet, the new uh, way of uh, creating uh, mm -hmm. communication and internationally, we need to have those communication. And this is where, for example, Omniverse and the USD layers is uh, one of the great uh, components where you could imagine, um, well, bringing asset and synchronizing asset to collaborate between two different worlds. That's um... okay. So um, I'm, I'm also a little bit foggy on the definition exactly of metaverse. And you said yourself, it's not so easy, but um, is it, I, is it for you more like uh, just one world that uh, someone creates or is it like, all of it sort of combined. I think that's a little bit what, what, what you were talking about, sort of 
enabling uh, those worlds to be connected to each other with the USD and what you talked about? Yeah, that would be my, well, the difficulty of the creation of one world would be the infrastructure, the hardware and the software part. Let's mm -hmm. say that today you need to have a, well, the internet exists also because of HTML. HTML is there, it's everyone knows, it's a way to communicate and everyone knows how to interpret that. But basically you could have a, uh, a network, some network, you know, the internet is just a, mm -hmm. one computer connected to a second, connected to a sub network, connecting all together with some gateways to uh, to communicate between them. So I would see that like like it's, I, I don't see one, one, uh, and there would be difficulty, I would say, for some uh, one company to handle that. I mean, that wouldn't make sense. So we need to have some open standards. To, so that yeah. it would spread out uh, here and there, and then some gateways to uh, to uh, to link the the world of uh, Pokémons with the worlds of uh, people uh, living yeah. underwater. Let's say, yeah, mm. yeah. I I would I would really love to see something like this in the future, like uh, what they have in, in the movie Ready Player One, where they have different planets. I th I think or different worlds, sort of. So it's sort of is like uh, like we just des described something like this and you see i was thinking about and, and i've been reading well the, the metaverse is a well it's a well a buzzword or it's a word i mean it's a word it's a concept that is coming i don't see it not coming when i don't know exactly when it will be stable and everyone got access to it but sometimes i'm reading people too much focusing on recreating the reality my view about a virtual world should be like, you know, be it uh, Ready Player Me to that's a virtual world. I don't see the point about recreating uh, reality. I, mean, I would say uh, uh, it exists. In some cases, it makes sense. You know, you want to recreate uh, a place that you cannot go easily. You know, uh, I don't know. In yeah. France, we do have the Les Grottes de Lascaux, some places where you're not allowed to go. So you do a virtual visit of the environment. That's great. You give access yeah. to uh, places that you cannot reach. And this is part about virtual re reality. Virtual reality is to simulate also some places that you cannot reach easily. You know, virtual reality was starting also mm -hmm. with the, um, when people wanted to go to, uh, to the, well, to the moon, to the space, training pilots yeah. and so on with simulation. And that's great. But then on some extent, it would be great also to imagine even more, you know, create something some new concepts, some new, uh, maybe it will also change. Um, uh, the, 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 it's more philosophical uh, question and uh, so on, but our way of life, maybe uh, yeah. uh, married with children, maybe. Okay, I will stop on that discussion because it's, <laughs> there is no good point, bad point, but uh, who knows what will happen, you know, the, the interaction between people. Yes. I definitely love the idea to not just recreate what already exists, but think of new things like uh, where you have with these uh, AI generators nowadays that create you an image where you basically can ask it to generate anything you want, any word you want. And I think that that's something that I would also love to see in, in the in the metaverse, in the, like, let's say in, in the version of the metaverse we just talked about where everything is sort of connected and you can go from one place to another. And a good point that you mentioned, if I may, AI. AI for a virtual world, mm -hmm. this is something that, let's say, is m one of the key components of creating a virtual world. You cannot, because mm -hmm. imagine recreating, uh, recreating, oh, yeah. it takes amount of time, uh, behaviors and everything. So you need to have that key, that, that component part of the metaverse. So how far yeah. uh, extent it should be, but... That's a key component. And this is where also, if I may, uh, at NVIDIA, we do have also that component, uh, well, important components. And Omniverse has some components uh, AI-based as well. So, I mean, uh, if you want a virtual avatar tomorrow to answer, you you know, you visit virtually a place and uh, you've got no one, you don't have uh, someone to answer uh, a question. Maybe you could add a virtual boat. Uh, well, it would be uh, more than a boat. Uh, give me some information about this and that. Uh, can you recreate uh, what would have happened if? Uh, and, yeah. Um, that's the population. Yeah, that's the new world. That's a new world somehow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love the idea. And uh, uh, we talked about like what would be cool about the metaverse and what, what we like about it. But do you have some concerns uh, when 
the metaverse like becomes like a, a very usual thing to do at um, some point. Yes. Um I, I would say yes for sure. I tend to believe that, for example, there's some basic uh, elements that there's no point about recreating virtually. Or it's like, uh, you know, uh, um, um, I've been, uh, I've got some background in AR, uh, augmented reality. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when when I was watching that video of um, a big company, okay, I will uh, not make friends, but uh, uh, trying to help a uh, plumber to uh, help you. Mm -hmm. uh, fix a leak on, at your place. Well, basically, mm -hmm. you find a good plumber. So you don't need the augmented reality headset. So the technology should be used for um, uh, a good purpose and a, a purpose that makes sense. Like if you want to help uh, Thomas Pesquet, our French uh, space unit, went into uh, mm -hmm. the, the space station to repair the cage here, augmented reality would make sense. The same for the metaverse. There is some topic that could be, that wouldn't make sense or that could be I would say um, not correct. Um, well, I won't go into, I don't want to give some bad ideas, but I would say this is like any kind of new technology. If it's used yeah. efficiently for a right purpose, that's a great technology. Um, yeah. As it's with, with everything, when you give humans something, they will find a way to sort of abuse it into um, malicious ways. I, I think, I, think I, I get the idea. Yeah. And my other part is that I don't want to end up in just uh, so far uh, a virtual world. Uh, well, world, uh, our world is already great. We need to take care of it. The metaverse should be an add-on. It's like any kind of technology uh, you're using. Yeah. A, um, I can tell you, I was not a smartphone guy for years, but uh, using a map uh, to find your way—that's great. Uh, if it's uh, to to, uh, to play a game with your children that is just in front of you in the same couch. No, uh, take uh, some uh, card uh, and play with your children in front of you. You see, this is uh, where I have some time. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, so uh, we we just don't all live in a uh, two meter by two meter apartment <laughs> and ju just live in the in the in the metaverse all day long, and like really like yeah, I I, I get the idea. And, and that's. The point, if I may, the, the Star Trek. Every time I'm, I'm thinking about Star Trek, the holodeck, where you're into space. When we will reach space, we will need that virtual world. You know, you want to see, or I'm a really yeah. sci-fi kind of guy. Uh, show me a big landscape with some uh, water, uh, calm, and so on. A great, uh, peaceful environment. That's a big purpose. I like it. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you, Benjamin, for uh, all your insightful uh, answers and uh, for your thoughts. Uh, I hope everyone in the audience enjoyed it. And um, yes, also thanks to the audience for listening or watching to this. Uh, Benjamin, I hope seeing you around and uh, have a fantastic day. Thank you. And just one, uh, one uh, last sentence. If, uh, if I was not clear on Omniverse, please look at uh, some videos uh, too. It's difficult in uh, just uh, saying words about 3D virtual world. You know, it's uh, you need to experiment as well. That's all. Or you can know now you yeah. know my name. Um, well, if you want to reach me out, don't hesitate. All right. Yes. Uh, look up uh, Benjamin Bayard. And if you have any more questions about this, uh, you can ask him or you can go to NVIDIA's site of uh, Omniverse, look a little bit around and see if you can build something cool with it. It's uh, certainly uh, here at We Are Developers. We would love you to, uh, to show us something that you build with uh, Omniverse. And with that, uh, I say goodbye and uh, have a nice one, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.